Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. It is no secret, the footies content as of late has not been everyone's favorite. While it's not been bad, it's left us wanting more. Today I wanna to discuss what happened to footies and why is it not popping like it usually does. Also, today is rewards day, which is gonna mean a few things for the market and for this game. And also the last day of footies team number one. What might be changing for week two? We'll take a look at a bit of pack code that's already been leaked and a bit more. If you're excited for it, drop a thumbs up and of course subscribe if you are new. Let's go over yesterday's Wednesday content. Guys, we were expecting a new weekend league objective. EA forgot something and that is what they forgot. They did not release a new objective yesterday for a nation specific weekend league with a bonus player. I guess El Shawawi was either the last one or they're going to release it maybe today or that's just not a part of the rest of the footies content plans. I don't know. But instead, we had this footies target objective player here with 99 passing. Kind of a, a play on the name, I think, guys. Remember the uh, Gift Lynx card and the Ferrari center back card that we had last year during, I think it was either Shapeshifters or Footies. I think this is kind of the same thing here, right? He's, his name is Target, Matt Target, with 99 passing and all of the passing play styles with three of them being play style pluses. So kind of a play on the name. It's not a bad card, but it's also not like um, insane, in my opinion. Four star, five star. He can play in the midfield as well, which is if I was going to play him somewhere, I'd maybe play him as a box to box center mid with those passing statistics that he has. Um, and then his other stats that he has as well, decent in defending, but no play styles. Uh, and then a lot of the scoring play styles as well, but nothing in ball control. Really, really interesting card kind of all over the place, but that one's free. It is a few games play for win for not too bad, but that was our only objective that we had yesterday. No XP inside of that either. Usually inside of the players like Adiemi and stuff, there was XP inside of that target there was no XP. So that was a little bit lackluster yesterday in the objective content piece. Now let's go to the SBC section where things got a little bit better, but not crazy. Of course, we're going for the big pack that dropped yesterday, known as the No Name Pack. Maybe you saw me or some other people talking about that yesterday, especially on stream, because when you open this pack or right before you open it, when you see it in the store, at least yesterday around the content drop and for a few hours afterward, there was no description on the pack. It was literally just like the untradeable sign and nothing else was there. It was kind of weird. But this 94 plus PTG, Sorry, that's not the right one. It's this one. The greats of the game, team of the tournament, or footies, team one upgrade pack. It's cheap. It's worth doing just because it's a gamble. But man, like, ah, it just really did not hit that different. Like, a lot of the pulls that we saw from this pack right here were actually greats of the game heroes. And once again, just like the 94 plus, they took the icons out of it, and it's only the heroes or the footies players inside of it, excluding the icons, right? That's a little bit of a bummer. The team and tournament cards were actually the most common card to pack from this, and it was the Copa America cards, honestly. I was packing the Aramburu, uh, the... Who was it? Munoz, um, Oliveira, so many of those fodder Copa America team and tournament cards. Honestly, whenever we saw a Euro team and tournament, it was actually a good pull. Conte, Gakpo, some of those players we packed yesterday on stream. For 100,000 coins and for two squads, it's not bad. It's just the weight is not that great. What do we always say about the cheaper upgrade pack SPCs, right? The cheaper they are, usually the worse the weight is, but it is still fun to do a cheap SPC for a chance at something nice. 84, 87. Now that did make make some fodder move. We'll talk about that in a second. The other SBCs we had yesterday was an interesting one. Again, mid, but fun in its own way. Dynamic duo. It's been a while since we had one of these. We have Okocha and we have Kanu, the two Nigerian heroes here, both getting footies cards. And uh, both of them, you could argue, usable. Okocha, five star, five star with a 99 dribble. Trickster plus and finesse plus is nice. And then you have Kanu, who's more of an aerial threat attacker with aerial plus rapid and power shot with 97 dribbling, 95 pace, and 95 uh, shooting. So, not bad. These two cards both, you get them for 160k, I believe. You do two 80, an 88-rated squad and an 86-rated squad with a team in the season, and boom, you've got that done. So, another kind of fun thing to do there. I like that. It's cool. But again, it just kind of follows the trend of all the player species that we have had during this week of footies. 
just kind of fun and kind of mid, but that's about it, right? Now, also yesterday, we did have SBCs refreshing. First of all, the Icon Pack, which I've already done twice from the crafting yesterday. That was probably the most commonly completed SBC that was coming out yesterday. We were opening a bunch of them on stream, but the weight was once again really not that good. I got lucky in my second one and got Charlton um, Greats of the Game, which was really, really sick, and that was one of the best pulls of the day because a lot of them were just Desai, Zanetti, a lot of Golazo icons like Charlton Golazo, Ashley Cole, Lampard was very popular yesterday as well. A bit unfortunate, but again, that's also a testament to the cheaper upgrade packs, the cheaper icon packs usually have a bit worse of a weight. But that, of course, with those two things for sure, the gamble packs refreshing yesterday of the icon pack and then the brand new greats of the game team and tournament or 40s guaranteed, those coming out made fodder go to the moon. GG's if you invested in 84s, right? We were looking at these cards for the low 2K range, which is where they were yesterday. 2.2K, even 2.5K would have been fine. They went all the way up to 4,000 coins because of all of the uh, SBCs that either refreshed yesterday that people were doing, the TOTS SBC that we'll talk about in a second, the Team of the Week SBC, and the new greats of the game uh, guaranteed that came out from 2,000 coins all the way to 4,000 for all of these 84s. 85s went up a bunch as well. They were like 4,000 coins. I think they went to almost 6K or even above that. Um, close to 6K for Bunny Shaw, 5.7. 83s were 1.4, 1.5 at their peak. Like all fodder was exploding yesterday in terms of the gold fodder. So if you had invested at all, GG's, that was by far and away if you bought any fodder this week, whether it was every day with the 84s or maybe it was just yesterday with the 83s, 4s, 5s, 6s, that was the best way to make coins this week, 100% because of all of the movements on the market with those cards. Now, this is the SBC that was refreshed, right? The 90 plus TOTS tradable. And I want to talk about this because yesterday we spent a lot of time talking about investing in team of the season cards. And of course, since that SBC and the team of the week SBC both refreshed or was were re-released, those cards are down and they're down as expected. Now, as I expected as well, as we talk about the investment potential here for these, the prices of these team of season cards did not drop near as low as they did last week, right? That's the, that's because there's more eyes on these cards this week as a potential investment because people saw how good they did and they want to get involved, right? Last week, TOTS cards went to 29K before popping back up into the mid 30s. Today, they or yesterday, I guess, they went from about 50,000 coins. If we go here, yeah, 46,000 coins dropping down from 50K for Dolphic. He went all the way down to about 34,000, and now he's slightly going back up, slightly just going back up um, yesterday, according to the graph. And I think you're seeing that that, that low on the team of the season was kind of like very quick, and they're starting to go back up 36,000 coins now because people are investing here for the potential profit. Now, I like this investment still. I'm still doubling down on it. Um, the team of the season cards that are the regular TOTS are more expensive. They're 36,000, 37,000 coins a piece right now. If you want to buy something for your club and you're not as much worried about a profitable investment, but just getting a team of the season card that you can put into SBCs at the lowest price possible, I would look at TOTS Moments and TOTS Plus because they are way cheaper. They're about 29,000 coins per card. These will still go up, but they will not go up near as much as the regular team of the seasons because people and the casuals, I think, really just assume that you can only use regular TOTS cards. They don't search for these other versions, TOTS Moments or the TOTS Plus or the live TOTS as well. So if you just want to put a couple of TOTS cards in your club, which is kind of what I'm going to do with this investment, I'm not going to go all out like I did last week. Like last week, TOTS Moments were 22k and they rose back to 40 plus right that's still a really really good investment right this week they went down to about 26 and they're already back up to about 28 29 so you can see right here right there was a big drop off and then investors started going in right here which i don't blame them i don't blame them at all they were that close to last week's low prices, that's still really low. 26K for team of season moments is really low. Even the low 30s, right? That's what we were talking about in yesterday's video. 
34K was like a little bit towards the high end of what I wanted to pay for a TOTS card, but I do believe that these cards will go up. I really do because we're going to continue to get SBCs, the 84 times 10, whatever it refreshes with, maybe an 85 times 10 later on this weekend on Saturday. Other SBCs like icon packs and picks, they're going to be refreshing. I have no doubt about that because it is footies. I do think this TOTS investment will end up paying out. I just don't think they're going to go up as much, guys. If I would have to say for a TOTS card price, like how much will they go to this week? You see, I I won one on bid here for 31k. If you're still trying to get some, get on the bids 100%. I paid 35 for a 94 rated. It's okay to pay a one, two, three thousand coins more for the higher rated ones because they will just go up higher. But the bids are the way to try to get these cards 100%. Do it this morning, early today with rivals rewards getting pushed out. Some people will be taking tradable stuff. Maybe some of the tradable tots cards that are in packs will be dipping on the market a bit and having supply. And then also people getting fodder from rivals going and doing the 90 plus tots to go and just get some easy free coins from that SBC. So do I still like the tots investment? I do, but I don't think they're going to go up as much. If I had to say a peak price, I think tots will go to, I'm thinking 42k to 45k, which is not as high as 53 as they were this past week. I think there's more people that have invested and I think there's going to be more tots cards that are in batch two. That's the biggest worry right now, guys. Everybody has. Everybody who's not investing in TOTS is saying, oh, but Nate, there's going to be more TOTS cards in Batch 2. I don't disagree. I actually think there are going to be more TOTS cards coming out this Friday in packs, but I still think there's going to be so much demand for the SBCs, especially on the daily, that the TOTS prices will not crash, and I think they're going to stay around the same and then in turn go up over the weekend as things continue on. Other people have been pointing to this TOTS provisions pack and saying, Nate, this is going to destroy the TOTS cards. No, it is an untradeable provisions pack. And for all the provisions pack packs that have been added to the store this year, how many of them have actually been worth it? Slim to none of them. So if this TOTS provisions pack, which gives two TOTS players between 88 and 90, so it's not like it's 88 plus. There's no like you could pack and bop it from this. It's literally only fodder TOTS. If this is more than 75,000 coins, which it's probably going to be, it is not worth it at all. If this is 40,000 coins and you can repeat it like every single day, then there might be a bit of a problem with it because getting two TOTS cards for 40K would be a really good deal. But I can't see that happening. These provisions packs have not been that good. It's untradeable. I don't think that's going to impact the TOTS that much. The biggest impact is going to be how packable are TOTS cards in batch number two. I think they'll be there and more packable, but I still think TOTS cards can beat out that supply with a lot of demand for SBCs and they can go up. So that's kind of the situation. I want to talk about the TOTS cards. You can invest in Team of the Weeks as well. I'd be a little bit more skeptical on Team of the Weeks, um, but maybe it seems safer to you since they did not re-release any Team of the Week cards, but that is the best investment right now. It is TOTS Team of the Weeks because they keep requiring them in SBCs and they're not supplying them as much. Now, let's try to answer that question that we asked earlier on in the video, guys. What has happened to footies. Let's talk about that for a second. Take a step back. We just mentioned footies team two. I'm kind of ready for footies team one to be done because the content has been good. Like it has been, it's been solid. Last Friday was hype with the Kaka, with the Modric, with the evolutions that they dropped, the ability to do two Evos at once. It started off great, but since then it's just kind of been tailing downhill. And I really, I can't pinpoint it 100% as to what it is, but I do know for one thing, the SBCs, I think a big part of it for me is the SBCs this week, because so many of them, besides the Modric and besides the Kaka, have just been mid. Fakir had potential. Loftus-Cheek had potential to be great. You know, I don't need all these SBC players to be the best and in fitting into all of our teams. Every single SBC player like needs to be one that we all feel like we have to do. Now, I like them releasing cheaper, more budget-friendly options because everybody in this game is at different levels. Some people have 100,000 coins and 15 minutes to play the game every day. Others have millions and a lot of time to play the game. Wherever you fall in that range, the, diff the content's going to be different. Um, you're going to you know, interact with content differently than somebody else is. I have no problem with cheaper, more fun SBCs like some of these cards, even like Sorloth that we've had recently, even the Kanu and the Okocha from yesterday as well. I have I have no problems with those. The problem I do have though is that that's the only content we've had this week, especially since like Saturday, right? Because we had the Kaka, we had the Modric, which were great, a little more expensive and really good cards, but everything since then has just been really cheap, 
which kind of mid, nothing super crazy, but still good. But again, it's on that lower tier. And I think a lot of us right now, as I mentioned earlier in the weekend, a lot of you guys have been putting in the comments, we just want something more. We want something that feels worth it to grind towards. The ability was just not worth it. The Kaka is the best SBC of footies so far, hands down. Modric is second. And then after that, I'm probably looking at the 84 times 10. The 84 times 10 might be number one ahead of those player SBCs, but you get what I'm saying, right? The pack grind is another thing. Like the pack grind was great right away. I mean, it was awesome opening up any sort of pack, and especially like 82 plus player picks, which have been basically unlimited with the exchange grind. I have no complaints about that, right? That is good, but that's also what footies kind of brings us every year. So it's it's expected a little bit, but it's still good. I just think also maybe I'm a little bit tired of packing the same guys over and over and over. And I'm so glad because it could have been a lot worse. Last year, the footies re-releases were out for two weeks at a time. This one goes away tomorrow and Friday, as well as the team one footies cards that are in packs. So I'm really glad that it's not a two week stint with these promo cards and packs because then it would really get old real quick. But luckily we're gonna have new cards coming in and it's gonna shake some things up and that's gonna make this Friday more exciting for sure. The one positive thing I will say is I like the position part of the footies SBCs with the heroes and the icons, but again, the delivery just hasn't been super insane. And then evolutions as well. If we speak about Evos, Evos started so hot, right? We had two of those footies duo Evos right away with a footies superhero, which was great. Sure. We had the bronze upgrade one, which is like, okay, whatever. But then it just kind of stopped, which is weird, right? They give us the opportunity to do two Evos at the same time. And then they are not you know, consistently releasing more Evos. So maybe there's more Evos that are coming, but that's just kind of how it feels a little bit. It just feels like for some reason the footies hype started and it started off great, but now it's just kind of lacking. Do you guys agree with me? I don't know. Let me know in the comments how you're feeling because yesterday at the content drop, I was like, shoot, I want to get on, see what it is. But then after that, I was like, well, there it is. Like I did my gamble pack for the day. I did my 84 tens. I still have to do a couple more of those. Did an 85 plus player pick and I was like, all right, sweet. I'm good. You know, that type of thing. Nothing that's making me want to stay on the game, grind the packs even more because we've already done it for a few days. Like there's nothing that's making me want to continually grind because I feel like I've packed just about everything that I can pack right now. And it feels like I have no absolute, no shot at the footies cards. Th that's one thing that I think really makes footies less than what it used to be is the footies cards being in packs. Because just imagine if we didn't have any of these cards in packs and we just had the best of re-release, but we had like even just pick a couple of the footies team one players as an SBC. Can you imagine Goretzka? Can you imagine footies Goretzka dropped as an SBC? That would be bananas. People would go crazy for that. Yeah, he's only what? 470,000 coins, 500k on the market. This SBC for 500k would be everywhere. Everybody would want to do him. Goretzka hasn't had a super crazy cracked out card. I mean, he had a tots moments, I think. Um, but this one would just take over and it would be so fun. And a lot of people would want to do that SBC, especially with the craft that is out. Now a 99 Neymar, is that realistic to have as an SBC straight at the beginning of footies? Probably not. I understand from an EA's perspective, you know, why they're not putting him in an SBC straight away. But just it feels like that with the footies cards being in packs this year and last year, two years in a row now, it just feels like it detracts a little bit of the hype from what footies used to be. Like even Stoichkov as an SBC, he's like 150K on the market. If that SBC was dropped for 200K, that'd be crazy. People would go bananas for that and we would love it, right? It's just the differentiation between what footies has become now, more stores, store pack oriented with the footies these cards in packs rather than just the SBCs. And of course the gameplay, a lot of the things too, like I asked the question to myself when I was thinking about this, like, are we expecting too much content wise? And I feel like the content this year has been really insane. The quantity and the quality of the content, it's a level up from last year, a hundred percent. There's so much more content and there's even better content in terms of the SBCs and the menu grind, but it still leaves something to be desired with this game. Is it the problem that we always want more or is there, well, there is a deep underlying problem with the gameplay that doesn't keep us wanting to be upgrading our teams and playing with cards because the gameplay doesn't feel rewarding enough from an experience standpoint and maybe sometimes from a reward standpoint as well, where you feel like you actually want to stay on the game. It's like, oh, let me check content, see what it is, and then 
okay, I'm off. You know, like, who cares if I get my rivals wins or whatever, because it just doesn't seem worth it. That sort of thing. I think it's that problem with the gameplay, but that's been kind of going on since team of the year. It's been an all year almost type of thing, but it's really starting to come to the forefront now with the menu content being the way that it is being pretty good. Um, like it, feel, it makes us want more in that area too, if that kind of makes sense. So, I mean, footies is always a fun promo and I'm, tr I'm not trying to harp on footies. Cause like I said in the beginning, it's been good. Footies has been good, but I think we all just want footies to be great. And I really hope that with the refresh of stuff coming on Friday for Team 2, new cards and packs, new SBCs, new stuff, I really hope it shakes it up. Now, let's talk about the last day today on Thursday of Footies Team number 1. What to expect? Well, Thursdays, right? Not a whole lot. Probably the, you know, the old marquee matchups, the throwback marquee matchups. I bet you'd expect to see that released today. Your normal SBCs are refreshing, uh, like the 85 plus picked, 84 times 10. Maybe save those. This is actually a shout. If you want to have more than just three 84 times 10s through tomorrow and Friday, maybe saving a couple of these today or the 85 plus picks could be a shout if you want. I know it's hard because like the menu grind is just unlimited repeatable at the moment with exchanges and the 82 plus pick and gold upgrades as well to get some of those rares. But if you want to save a couple packs, you might as well. And then of course, XP on Thursdays is a big thing that we look forward to as well. I don't know what we're going to get, to be honest, guys. The fact that we didn't have a weekend league uh, bonus dropped yesterday is really, really interesting. It's not like we're going to get a new cup because this one's still out for a whole other week. Um, I don't expect another player objective, maybe next Wednesday. And then, yeah, just the weekly stuff refreshing. And a lot of people now are getting to Al Oweyrin, Dirk Kite, and Alex Scott. One thing I do want to mention here, I might have mentioned it yesterday, but I tweeted about it. If you didn't see it, if you're getting close to Al Oweyrin, it's not assist 10, it is score 10 goals. I think EA is aware that it's messed up, but it is counting for goals, even though it says assists. And there's a lot of XP there. That really helps you level up really quick through the season if you're going to be doing those hero objectives which we kind of need to right to get the xp leveled up as quickly as possible so watch out for maybe a little bit more of that today and maybe one last player sbc i wouldn't expect anything crazy though before a big day of promo content tomorrow on friday last thing i want to talk about today in the video is today is actually a day for fc25 news we're going to be looking at this live on stream as it comes out gameplay deep dive actually if you want to go and go into it really crazy um, inside of the fc pro tab here there is a deep dive on youtube um, actually you get an objective there is a pack, guys, that you get a premium gold players pack. This is crazy. Like, you know, EA has given us rewards for playing or for watching pro events before. Now we're getting rewards for watching the deep dive. It's, uh, I don't know, it's kind of laughable, in, in my opinion, that this is this is a thing. Giving out packs for watching the deep dives, but they're doing it, and that happens today. So if you want to check this out, I guess you have to watch the broadcast live for three minutes for three minutes, you have to watch the broadcast and have your YouTube and your uh, uh, your FC account connected. And then you'll get the premium gold players pack, a Wara pack. But this gives the dates for when these are going to be released. So July 25th for gameplay deep dive. Rush is going to be just a few days, July 29th. August 2nd for career mode and August 7th for ultimate team. We have to wait all the way until August 7th for ultimate team. But I wanted to kind of mention that to you guys because that was a part of content from yesterday. And we're going to be seeing the first trailer with gameplay today. So hopefully we learn, give us some pitch notes, EA, give us some pictures, some images, some detail on things that are changing in FC 25. So that we get more detail, more news and info about exactly what that looks like. So that's something to look forward to today as a part of content as well. Again, we'll be on stream talking about that. That link is down below in the description. And then of course, we'll probably be talking about it in the video tomorrow, at least a little bit, or probably another dedicated video just to that, since uh, I think that's kind of the best way to do it with all the news and info and updates coming to FC25. So that is the video for today, guys. If you did enjoy, drop something up on it, comment below if you have any questions, and subscribe if you're new. Have a great Thursday, and I'll see you guys on the stream today. It's been Nathan for the Catch you there. Peace out.